Hi everyone, welcome to uh, today's um, session where we're going to be looking at uh, the different markets um, starting with with forex sorry we're all a bit uh, discombobulated here um i hope you can hear me can you hear me david okay. oh david can hear me so i know you can hear me as well but before we start uh, can i just draw your attention to the disclaimer that i know you can see on your screen as you know trading can be a very risky business so please please don't ever think of using money that you cannot afford to lose i'm just going to whiz through very quickly because i've had a quick look down the list of uh, people who've uh, taken the time out to come and join us for this session and I actually see a lot of names that I don't recognize I, I'm, I can see some of our, our Forex program students and some of our quantum users so if this is your first time very quickly this is for you as I said we're going to be looking this is a long session but what we're going to do is it's then chopped up into maybe three or four videos and it goes uh, the recordings go up on YouTube and there are there are three I think it'd be three sections rather than four, but there are three distinct uh, elements. We're going to start with the Forex, um, which is what we're going to do now. Then we're going to stop for a few minutes and we're going to uh, just take and have a drink or something. And then we're going to come back and we're going to look more at um, uh, indices and some commodities. Then we're going to have another five minute break and then we're going to come back and we're going to focus on stocks. Now, you're more obviously, you're more than welcome to stay for all three sessions. I know people are joining us at different uh, at different times, but it's we've done it this way because the, the methodology that we use to explain what is going on on the charts of volume price analysis, you really do, you can apply it to whatever you trade and whatever time frame you uh, you trade. But as you can appreciate, it's very difficult to talk very broadly, um, you know, for any length of time. It's so that's why we've you know we've chunked it up into these very specific markets. Having said that, even if you are just a forex trader, um, it's it helps to know what is going on in the other markets because currencies move for all sorts of different reasons. They move um, because of sentiment. There, there are lots of drivers uh, for currencies and currency pairs. And sometimes that driver does come from uh, a, a relate, what we call a related market. So as part of um, the, what we teach, what David and I teach is on the technical analysis side is volume price analysis which is a, this very intimate relationship between price action and volume. But at the same time, it's then expanded uh, to include, as I said, the other factors that will drive uh, the currencies and currency pairs. So that's obviously the fundamental news, the news releases of which this morning has been very, very important because we've had the RBA and we're going to look at uh, uh, what's happened as a consequence of uh, what uh, Governor Lowe has been saying. And then we have a third element, which is what we call the related markets. And as I said, so even if you just uh, trade uh, or interested in trading forex, I think you will find that we, or there's always something to learn by understanding what is going on in the broader markets and in the other capital markets. And and it works both ways. So even if you are a, 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 day, a, a stock trader, it it, it, it does um, it does help if you know what is going on in the bond market, what is the, what are the commodities doing, and also what are the, what's the forex market uh, doing, because often um, the certain stocks are very sensitive to uh, the exchange rate, and particularly here in the UK uh, with the FTSE, because the constituents that make up an index, maybe if they, uh, you know, they derive most of their earnings uh, abroad or in particularly if an index is uh, loaded, backloaded with stocks that are in the commodity space, such as the oil space at the moment, um, that is that is going to make a difference as to whether that index is going to be sort of moving up or you know just basically going nowhere. But a lot of the concepts we talk about, as I said, are all contained in the books that are up on Amazon. This is what we put together for Forex, but there are also uh, books for um, examples of what happens with uh, with indices and stocks. So, as I said, volume price analysis. I know most of you have seen this before. I said volume and price. It's a kind of methodology. We use candles and candle patterns, and we'll, you'll be able to see them on the charts as well. And this element here, the fifth element, which is uh, the support and resistance. And again, 
it's easier you know it is so crucial support and resistance for all sorts of different reasons for stock placement for uh, potential price objective price targets for entries for exits i mean you could go on and on and on support and resistance is really going to help you not only you know manage your trade uh, but also you know uh, help you with your um, uh, in terms of deciding what is the what is the risk on the trade itself and we'll talk about that when we actually see that on an example of a chart and on top of that on the charts you can then add whatever indicators you want you've got the indicators that come to your platform we have our own we've developed our own proprietary indicators and everything is overarched with time and we're going to look at time in multiple time frames I'm also going to look at um, um, are going to be looking at three charts today. Those of you who come along know that I use, I've got five. David has got a different combination of, of time frames with his platforms. Um, but I've, I have a lot of uh, emails from people who say, well, you know, I've only been using one chart. I'm really having difficulty, you know, move you know maybe maybe two maybe three is my maximum so what i've done is i've done a little thing where um, i'm going to explain how you can use the hour the five minute and the renko because i'm just focusing on mt for the mt4 platform because it's you know one of the uh, it's one of the easiest platforms to learn so time as i said multiple time frames and also looking at the actual time frame that you are trading and the indicators as i said we've developed our own uh, really to support the VPA method, but for Forex in, uh, in particular, we've got these very particular ones, and that is because Forex is all about flow. It's about the flow of money into an individual currency. You know, the, this Forex market is there for a purpose. It's there to, it lubricates all the other markets. It's, it's the medium of exchange. So, you know, banks and, and, and trading desks and, and, and you know, and large corporations have a need for currency so they will have to buy uh, a british pound or a euro or a, an aussie dollar or they or they or you know whatever their uh, their requirement is it, is it is at any given time so that is the first step so you start with the flows that are going into so what is the market buying at this particular moment is it buying lots of aussie is it is it uh, buying lots of kiwi is it buying euro what's it selling so that's why we have the currency strength indicator so really it's a strength indicator but as in a way it's a flow indicator and then obviously we have to look at well what where's that flow you know in what pairs because the way the business works at the at the at the institutional end is you know the uh, i was talking to uh, one of our um, uh, uh, traders who used to do this he was a market maker years ago in uh, in the city of london he said you know um if, you know if he'd got a if he was given an instruction to go and he needed to buy some Ger back in the day some german deutsche mark um you know how would he acquire them he may have been given some to sell it's not a straightforward transaction so what I'm saying is you you may have to buy some euros as it were well are you going to buy them against the dollar are you going to buy them against the Aussie are you going to buy them against the Canadian you know it's the, the, they have all these options and the route to getting the euros at the price that they want to get them is not the route that you may think it is. It's, I'm hoping he uh, may come and do a webinar for us and, uh, and explain how this thinking, this multi-level thinking goes on in the institutions to get, you know, getting from A to B is not a direct route. It's kind of quite a, quite a zigzag route. I think we had an example somewhere, David, wasn't it? Someone wanted to, uh, needed to do an exchange on dollar Singapore, no, dollar um, South African Rand, but it couldn't be done directly. Anyway, I'm not going to go on about it anymore because it's just to explain. We start with the individual flows, then we look at where those flows are going into most strongly into the different pairs, which is why we've got the matrix here. The currency array is an interesting indicator because it's, a, it's more of a strength of trend, um, and we use it in the way to see whether you know the trend is still going or we're looking at an overbought or oversold. And we've got the currency heat map, which is really looking at uh, everything in multiple, going back to time, in multiple time frames. And we are very bad, I do accept. Uh, we need to feature the currency heat map much, much more because you can actually use it in two ways.
You can use it on an intraday basis to monitor because, you know, trying to look at how many uh, time frames we've got up here, it's almost Im impossible, um, uh, you know, more than three, maybe five charts, but this gives you a, a, a very broad picture. Or you can use it on a medium to longer term and really look at the overextension, you know, what is, what's being bought, what's being sold, is it time for a reversal? And often these longer term reversals are also linked to what is happening maybe on the fundamental side, um, that's the macroeconomic side as it were. And lastly, we now have put together a program, a funded program, because we appreciate, you know, um, coming into this business, like any other business, you have to start with something. You have to have, uh, you know, a bit of capital to get you going. And, um, you know, and but there's no guarantee that, that there's no guarantee in any business, in any endeavor that you are going to succeed to the level that you want to succeed. So what we've done is we've put together this program and it's open, to, only open to the uh, uh, if you go through the complete forex program there is a cost there's a one-off cost of entry then you will get uh, uh, the opportunity to uh, have your have an account it's you can opt at the evaluation stage for five fifty uh, five ten or fifteen thousand account it's not your money it's our money and you trade it and you can if you you know you get you can work through the different levels right up to managing an account of two million. Uh, David will explain that in a little bit more detail as we go along. All right, as I said, I have got MT4. Very, very quickly, just whiz round what's been going on today. Let's have a look, just pull it over. Because uh, it's been a really interesting uh, session so far. Now that's the wrong, wrong one here. I need my Firefox one, here we are. Uh, because, 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 uh, those of you who come along will know that I have, I have three um, economic calendars going. Um, it reminds me when David and I travel to Italy, when maybe not, not sure this year, we, we drive to Italy. We always have, we have one sat nav, we have another and we have two sat nav, but I always have a map as well because we have been caught out so many times by you know blindly following the uh, the sat nav and we've got the completely I'll never forget the one where it took us through Paris and absolutely absolutely spitting blood those of you who've driven through tried to drive through Paris through the periphery will know exactly what I mean anyway so for its factory as we know we've had this RBA uh, rate statement and we've also had the cash rate which has stayed as it is and if you are an Aussie trader or you've looked at your charts this morning you think Mm. It was a, a very dovish, uh, what's called a dovish uh, um, uh, um, uh, release in the sense, well, you know, interest rates aren't going anywhere. And then suddenly it did for it did uh, sell off. But boy, oh boy, the Aussie has been an, in, in an incredible upward trajectory, as we can see, as I said earlier, as Oz, we can see of the flows. And it's one of these situations where you kind of you didn't get a contradiction. It was right. Interest rates are not going anywhere, he says, until 2023, maybe 2024. So the market's here, yeah, fine, we'll sell, sell, the, uh, sell the Aussie. And then suddenly there's a complete about face. As soon as he started to speak, it went the other way. And that is because um, if you actually read into what he um, what he was saying, is it's about QE. They're talking about tapering. They, Australia has been blessed with, I think this is the first time they've been in a recession for, I don't know, how, how many years they've, they've really weathered the economic storms that we've had over the last uh, 10 years or so very very well but even they have gone into QE issuing bonds etc cetera, etc cetera, as what the Fed does and all the other central banks but they're talking about tapering and as soon as the market hears about tapering that's it uh, it is uh, it's it, you know the it's it's more hawkish so the currency is bought so you've got this kind of bit of a paradox uh, in what happened this morning. It was all very dovish in the sense that in, you know, interest rates aren't going to go up. But as soon as he started talking about QE. Now, the thing about the Australians uh, and the uh, Australia, the RBA is of the banks, um, they are that they do actually produce very clear um, uh, documents, very clear explanations. They're, they're very, they're very transparent bank. And it brings us back to one of the things we always say with Forex, with any um, instrument that you are wanting to trade or invest in, you really have to get to know um, the background to it. You have to know who, you know, who are the the person, 
who are the personalities, if you like, uh, that may, you know, that are going to drive that instrument either higher or lower? What are the characteristics of that instrument? And one of the things you have to do as a forex trader, you kind of got to get to read what the central bankers say. Now, some of them can be very impenetrable, and you think, what the hell are they talking about? I'm not any, I'm not an economist. You know, you may have, but you know, then you find someone who can interpret that for you but you gradually do get to get a feel for you know what they what they say what they mean and what is going to move the market and that was a really classic example this morning with the RBA so then we go off to my my little chum Amine anime over at financial juice which is great so we've had the uh, zdw what's happened there well that came in the economic sentiment that came in way way under but the current condition came in uh, much much better than what retail sales you'll find financial juice is probably more comprehensive it will bring in a lot of um, um things like the um uh, the auctions for uh, uh, for treasuries as well that you don't necessarily see in um, in Forex Factory and my last calendar which is probably the most comprehensive of all is this one from Trading Economics which you actually make yourself you filter yourself you can choose the countries that you want to see and those are every single country you can see you really wouldn't want that on your calendar so you can either filter it to um, you know you can reduce it if you're only ever going to trade maybe I don't know uh, three or four pairs um, then you just tailor it to what you want and it's, it is very very good and what you have is the the um, the, the items and use that are significant they're they're in bold as it were so for example this retail sales here they give it a high impact uh, effect if you like whereas if you look at Forex factory if you look at the retail sales it's given a very you know a very low impact um, um, effect so and also it does actually also have some some nice charts here uh, and you can see whether it's you know there's a trend you read fundamental data as a trend and the last thing i'm going to say about fundamental data is this um the particulars we had the uh, nfp on friday and we haven't had a chance to catch up on on the nfp and everybody looks at the the headline numbers and and no one can ever said well you know the, the number comes in sort of reasonably you know reasonably uh, uh you know good and the market goes down and it doesn't it doesn't seem to behave in you know good news market up bad news market down and the first thing you have to understand is how that um expectation number is actually uh, achieved and so if you like the the number that is given on the economic calendar say for the nfp it's collated from all sorts of different sources i think it's uh, 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 economy what to say economy economy i'm not right economists and various sources but I will, I, will, I will quote this to you. When David and I were in the computer business many, many years ago, um, there was, a, and we worked for companies that weren't IBM, it was very, very difficult to get in to get new business because it was always the same was no one ever got fired for buying IBM. So when an economist is asked for his opinion about, you know, what do you think the number is going to be this this time around? They're never going to actually give what they really think because their job might depend on it. So if you if there's 20 economists who are asked for their opinion on NFP, you will find generally their consensus is like the distribution curve. They're going to be sitting in the middle. It's called herding. It's the herding uh, uh, um, effect, as it were. So. What the, so you've got to be aware of that. So when the market, the market will react strongly if it's wildly at either end of that distribution curve. So last Friday, it was kind of, you know, what the, what the market expected. Plus, it was before the holiday. Markets don't like, certainly in the States, they don't like ending on a down note before such an important holiday like the 4th of July. So it's stuff you just have to be aware of. Uh, you know, when you, these important news releases come around. Right. The other interesting fact this morning is this is I mean, it's clear. It's clear what we can see here. The, the, the dollar, there's been some dollar buying. There's some uh, yen buying. Um, the, the Swiss franc is still selling, uh, selling off, but it you know, looks like that's going to turn up. That is from a sentiment perspective perspective is telling us that well we'll have a look at the indices in more detail later on and, and general market sentiment but it's 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 all a bit 
you know, yeah, it's good, but it's all a bit fragile. And, and sometimes sentiment comes through in Forex much sooner than it does in the other markets. But these are the ones that really catch your eye. There's been this tremendous strong sell in the Kiwi. And the Kiwi, you so say, why has the Kiwi gone up? Well, it tends to, does tend to follow the Aussie. So if the Aussie, you know, they, there is the expectation that the RBNZ is probably going to do what the RBA has done as well. Interestingly, how has that translated to our pairs? And the first thing you notice about the matrix, the matrix is a ranking indicator, is where are the majors? You know, where are the where are the dollar pairs? Because most vast majority of forex traders trade the majors because that's where you know the euro dollar, uh, dollar uh, dollar yen. That is where the biggest, you know, the deepest liquidity is. But today, if you look, it's all been the cross pairs, and it's been the cross pairs because we've had this huge influx into, uh, as I said, the uh, the two commodity countries, the, the commodity currencies. The commodity currencies will respond to sentiment. Those of you on the program will know that as well. Will know that, but they also respond to their own local uh, fundamental data, which today was, as I said, from the RBA. So that's that. I'm going to pass over to David. And then we're going to come back because what I've got here is I have got the, uh, we're going to look at levels because obviously the question is, is it actually going to, are we going to get a reversal? This is the daily chart for the Euro Aussie and the Pound Aussie is exactly the same. This is massive, massive down bar. But most of that move has clearly already happened. And we will now be looking at the North American session. We've got the Euro down at the bottom. So, you know, it's looking to buy uh, by you know, the reversal in the Euro. We can see the, the CSI I've got at the bottom of this um, uh, of this hourly chart here. You've got the Aussie. And they're very, very over extended but because we've already had this massive move lower is it actually going to go lower well you know we anything can happen things can stay overextended uh, for a lot longer than you and i can stay solvent um, but it may be that the reversals that we are going to get in the aussie and the euro may not happen in the euro aussie at all this is one of, this is what we call this rotation so um, this, we know what's happening happened from the CSI, but moving forward now and with the U, uh, with North America coming a lot on board, uh, maybe we should be looking for a good a good reversal um, for these currencies in another pet. Maybe this is where the majors actually uh, come into their own, as it were. Now, as I said, that that big down bar from today, that is where it is. This is this section of uh, this is this bit of price action that we have. On this hourly chart, this is the uh, candle with the, with the RBA. As I said, went down, up, and then back down again. And this is where your levels come into play. Now, this is the hourly chart. This is the price levels based on the Camarilla, the and the third level, the R3 and the S3. These are the most important. And those of you who have these these indicators, well, what I suggest you do, because it's something I'm doing at the moment, if you want to move away from the faster charts, and that is move to the hourly and look at what happens at the beginning of the week. Where is the price action? Is it near the R3 or the S3? Because I think you will find as the week goes forward, there's an awful lot that you can, uh, uh, you can, I wouldn't say you can almost, you know, uh, set your clock by it, but um, you will find some very interesting moves uh, for a, you know, staying in for two or three, uh, two or three days based on those level. That once they break through the R3 uh, or the S3 in in uh, in this uh, in uh, in this case, you will find the move will continue. But the a sale in the um, in the euro was it actually goes back to last actually instigated last Friday. These levels are recalculated every week. So this is this week's level. This would have been something completely different on Friday, but there was quite a long, uh, quite a strong sell-off uh, on Friday. We've got a, lots of uh, congestion, but then the market was, uh, you know, because of the 4th of July. Then we had the, as I said, the break low. It's actually from uh, from the S1, and but you could wait until the S3 and carry on. So it's just something to think of if you want to get away from the shorter time frames. Right, I'm going to go, as I said, to these three time frames, not on the Euro Aussie. I'm just going to be on another pair. So let me pass over to David. Hi, everybody. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, hopefully you can see my screen. 
and I can, and um, I'm hoping you can hear me because I've actually managed to switch my microphone on, which is a minor miracle because often I forget. Um, I'm going to whiz through this, um, so I'm not hanging about. Just start with the multiple C currency strength indicators. I've got the one minute, the five minute, the 10 minute, and the 15 minute. And as Anna said, these are setting up for some nice reversals. Some have already taken place. The Swiss franc here, the green line, this is rising really fast. Here on one is already got up into overbought, rising really sharply on the five minute, rising sharply on 10, and beginning to sh rise sharply on 15 as well. Then it's a question of, of matching that with uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the currency that you think is going to perform best for you on that particular trade. So you're looking at either perhaps the dollar, maybe the yen, or maybe one of the commodity currencies. And the point, as always, if you're going to trade reversals, and I know a lot of you come along regularly, you'll know what I'm going to say. I trade them all the time because I like to get into trends early. I don't particularly enjoy jumping into a trend once it's underway. But it comes at a price. If you're going to trade reversals, then you've got to put on wider stop losses. Now, I think someone asked in the in the VPA chat room the other day, you know, how how wide do you set your stop loss? And the answer I gave was really based along. There are so many different factors. First of all, you're looking at the chart because um, this is the starting point. The currency strength indicator is the starting point for for identifying opportunities, for guiding you to the chart, to guiding you towards timeframes that you might consider for a particular trading opportunity. But there are many different factors. First of all, you look at the chart, and as Anna said, levels are key. You're looking at levels, you know, and you're looking at VPA. You're looking at it and think, okay, we've got to this particular state of play on this particular time horizon. Is it looking like a reversal? Are we seeing strong buying coming in? Are we seeing strong selling coming in? Have we got some resistance above? Have we got a VPOC somewhere in a different time frame? Et so you're constantly looking at the chart in that context, trying to define where you might set your stop loss from that particular perspective. But there are many others because um, whatever currency pair you're going to trade, then each has, and it's it's something we explain in the in the Forex program about the volatility index. Obviously, every pair has a different characteristic. It has character of its own, a profile of its own. Some are more volatile than others. Now, if you're trading a pound yen, for example, and you're looking for a reversal trade on that, then the stop loss you're going to uh, place on that particular position is going to be wider by definition because you're on a, volat a volatile pair than if you were trading an Aussie dollar, for example, which is far less volatile. So that is also has to be a factor that you, 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 you build into the equation. So there's no hard and fast rules. You cannot. And part of it is instinct as well. Gut instinct, once you start doing this regularly, and you just set it according to your money management rules. But the the basic premise is that if you're going to trade off reversals, your stop loss has to be much wider, purely because you've got to allow for this buffering all the time. There is no guarantee that this will go straight down here. It may be up here for a while, the Aussie. All you can be sure of is that at some point it will move from overbought as it's starting to creep here back to oversold. You can see the Swiss franc here is already rolling over. It's gone right up into overbought and starting to roll down again. That's all you can be certain of, that at some point the currency will move because that is the nature of this business. This business is a market of mean reversion. And by that, all it means is that these currencies, the flow of these currencies is constantly from overbought to oversold to overbought to oversold in all time frames. That's the nature of the Forex world. All you have to do, it's about timing. And in waiting for a reversal to develop, you have to allow for that time to pass by um, creating the stop loss further than you would do if you're jumping onto an existing trend. If you're jumping onto an existing trend like this one here, for example, you've got the dollar falling and the Swiss rising, the dollar Swiss. If you're jumping on that right now, you know that's a trend that's underway. You've had a cross. The two currencies are moving nicely, nice trend up, nice trend down on the two of them, the two currencies individually. And therefore, you can be assured there is a trend, there's a strong trend. But of course, you've already missed all this section of it. That's already gone. But in jumping on that trend right now, your stop loss can be much wider, much closer to the position because the train has already left the station. It's underway. Uh, you're jumping, jumping on a moving train and therefore your stop loss can be that much wider, uh, that much closer rather.
So do bear that in mind. Consider the pairs you're, you're, um, you're trading if you're looking at reversals. And positioning of stop loss is, is an art. It's not a science. And it's based a lot on the chart and certainly in terms of the currency pair that you're trading as well. Before I hop over, I just want to hop around to cable. But before I do that, I just want to pull this over because this kind of carries on the same theme. Um, this is on TradingView. I've got three platforms running. I've got NinjaTrader, I've got TradeStation down the bottom here, and I've got uh, TradingView here. Now, this is on TradingView, and the reason I want to show you this is really this uh, exciting new indicator that has literally gone live this morning. The development team put it up this morning. It's on the site. Um, if you have the full package of TradingView indicators, you should find this in your uh, to be available to you. Um, if it's not, drop us a line help desk at quantumtrading.com but give us a day because we are doing it literally as i'm as i'm talking to you uh the guys have been adding on to uh, all the customers who have the full package so you'll get this automatically it's what we've always done over the years if you invest in a full package with us you get all new indicators free of charge it's as simple as that let's get rid of that nice for oil come on to oil in the later session um the reason i wanted to show it to you is because it has similarities to the CSI this is the currency strength indicator on the left which I've just shown you on um, the uh, which platform was on ninja trader um, this is on trading view it works in exactly the same way this is on the five minute this is the cryptocurrency strength indicator and from a, a principles point of view which is the point I wanted to make it works in exactly the same way. The difference is that on this, uh, on the cryptocurrency side, we are looking at the cryptocurrency in total. So this is Ethereum, and the orange line, which is just under here, is Bitcoin. So that is the cryptocurrency, whereas these are the individual currencies which we've broken out into the uh, Aussie, New Zealand, so on and so forth. Here we are looking at the cryptocurrency itself. The cryptocurrency is quoted against the dollar. And what we've isolated out here is Tether, which is the US dollar equivalent in cryptocurrency land in that market. And so it is based against the, uh, the dollar, the USDT, which is Tether, which is the red line. So what we have is exactly the same principles where these are moving up into overbought, the tether equivalent is moving down into oversold and we are looking at reversal opportunities and we are looking at trend trading opportunities the other significant difference with the cryptocurrency market is that generally speaking as you can see here the cryptocurrencies will move on mass now you can think of this in exactly the same way as we talk about it on the currency matrix for example where what we're looking at on the matrix when we're looking in the forex world it's we are looking for the universal sentiment of flow. If we're trading a dollar or we're trading an Aussie, we want to make sure that the market per se is all uh, buying or selling whatever direction, whether we, if we're buying Aussie, we want to be assured that the market per se is buying the Aussie across the complex, across the other six currency pairs. And that's part of what the matrix is about. So when all those currency pairs, those Aussie uh, currency pairs are stacked up either top or bottom, then we know for a fact that the market per se is buying or selling the Aussie. You know, there's no divergence. Now, occasionally, as you've seen, I'm sure many times on Forex in the matrix, you'll see divergence. You'll see one currency pair in a matrix moving in one direction while some are moving in the opposite direction, which is fine. That's down to local politics or a piece of news or whatever it may be. Absolutely fine. The difference with the cryptocurrency market is that Generally speaking, all the cryptocurrencies will move en masse together. There may be some slight divergence if you're down on the one minute, two minute, three minute, whatever. But generally speaking, this is what happens. This is what it looks like, which actually gives you a huge amount of confidence. If you're trading Bitcoin and you know that all the other uh, cryptocurrency pairs are moving in the same direction, it's a great confidence boost. And this is how it looks on the chart. This is on 20 minute. Fantastic move. Come off the overbought. Really strong move lower. And that is counterbalanced by an equally strong rise in Tether. So you've got a perfect trade. Are you going to get on the overbought and oversold state at this point and be patient and wait? Or are you going to jump on the moving train as Tether gets underway and this moves gets underway down here? So I just wanted to show you that. 
Um, as I say, it's up on the site. It is available for sale. If you have the full package, you'll get it free of charge. You'll be included with all the other indicators that you have. So you will find it there. Let's just see what's going on. Okay, the Swiss franc is still rising strongly. Very strong move on the Swiss franc. Dollar's kind of rolling over. Oz is still set up. It's just starting to move off the top here. This is what I mean. You've got to be patient. You've got to wait. It's just starting to move down here. And this is why using multiple time frames is so important. You're down here. The first thing happens on any time frame is your fastest. Then it moves into the next one. Then it comes across into the next one. Finally out to the next one. And if this is going to be a genuine move, you'll start to see it move here. And you'll start to see, for example, on the Swiss franc, this rising as well, which it is already doing so off the oversold. Right, let me just pull up very quickly the, uh, I just want to show you something on cable. Uh, this is cable, good strong move this morning. Um, this was something else that came up actually in the VPA room, which is about trading breakaways. And um, at what point do you jump in? And, you know, how do you define your entries? And Trading a breakaway like this is all to do with patience. You have to be patient. If you can't be patient, then don't trade breakouts. It's as simple as that. The beauty of trading this, if you could, if you have the patience to trade a breakout, there are several um, really clean elements to them. And perhaps the strongest of all is that you get these very clearly defined levels. This is around the VPOT, which is no great surprise. Obviously, congestion uh, tends to, to center around the VPOT anyway. Once we go into congestion, the, the volume will start to build. Heaviest volume goes right the way out here. Long congestion period. Then we're looking at the various levels. We've got a decent level on the, on the accumulation distribution up here. Not terribly strong. We had this one here as well. Then we've got the VPOT, and then we've got a level down here below. As you can see, it was tested here, held on that occasion, and then it came down here as well. Now, that may be enough for you to define your levels and say, okay, this is the channel we're moving in. Just move the chat box out of the way. You know, we're up here at, uh, where are we, 38.95, and our floor is down here at 75. So it's roughly a, a 20 pip uh, a channel that we're trading in. You then obviously look at the volume as the breakaway starts. Is this genuine volume? Is it a fake? You know, is the move away fake or is it on good, strong volume? The other aspect you're looking at is you're looking at the, the volume profile here on the VPOC because when the price action starts to break down and you've got this low volume region down here, you expect the market to move through there pretty rapidly because there's nothing in the way of a volume to cause it to act as a platform of support. So the price just moves through there pretty swiftly. And that's the beauty of the VPOC. Not is, not is it just about defining where the, the fulcrum of the market is. It is also about this key aspect of, of the volume profile and how it will help you as the market unfolds and starts to move away and into these regions. Because if you're coming into a low volume area like that, as a trader, you expect the market to move through there pretty swiftly because there's nothing in the way that's going to cause the market to pause. It's exactly the same way as you use support and resistance, price-based support and resistance. Here we're using it in terms of volume. Down we go, good strong volume. Then we start to see some buying coming in. And then we come out the other side and you're looking at these sorts of candles, all of these sorts of candles, the volumes. But what you're also seeing with this, which is uh, the attenuation in volume, it's one of the things you're looking at the whole time. The volume is high as we start to break away, looks fine. We go into congestion, we roll over again, we're down into high volume again. But look at the volume. The actual selling volume is, is draining away. It's, it's falling across that particular time horizon. Then we start to get a little bit of buying coming in, a little bit more buying coming in here. It doesn't look particularly strong. We have an effort to rally here. Look at this candle here. Now we're trying to rally, lots of volume going in, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it's... The other beauty, of course, with trading a breakout like this and a breakaway is that it's very easy to, to define where you are going to put your stop loss. If your risk and money management rules uh, allow it, then clearly the best place to put it is up here because you've got a whole wedge of stuff to get through if the price is going to reverse against you. If that's too far away, then probably the next level you might look at is above this uh, level here in terms of the accumulation distribution. So you've got some a decent protection level there. And of course, below that, you've got the VPOC as well acting as resistance too in case of any pullback. You see here, it did actually try and pull back. But for the market to move through and, and reverse strongly against that is really going to take some strong volume, which you, you just don't see. 
So you, you, you start to break away, you get a bit of a pause point here, then we get decent volume under here, then we get higher volume coming in here, and then uh, we get down into this congestion phase. Market's trying to rally, volume's falling away a little bit here, so you know it doesn't look particularly strong. Trying to rally, and what you're looking for constantly is the wicks. You've got lower wicks here, so we're expecting a little bit of buying here because we've got three candles with the wicks. Market tries to rally, falls back on decent volume. The volume falls away on the next one, so it hardly looks strong. Then we come along to the next two, but the volume's falling away. Nevertheless, it still looks a little bit weak, maybe a little bit more buying coming in there doesn't really rally then it's looking weak again you know wick to the upper body wick to the upper body again and then down we go into these two candles here at the bottom and a narrowing of the spreads and finally we get this candle at the bottom here which has got really um, quite lightweight volume and what you're looking at in the context of this candle is really how it equates to others of a similar size now if you look right back up at the top here this candle here I know it's got a little wick to the up to the lower body. This one's got a tiny wick. But in terms of comparison, it's more or less the same size. You know, maybe this one is is perhaps closer to it. But generally speaking, you're looking at these two candles and saying, well, you know, I had high volume up here or decent volume under these two. And now under this candle, this volume seems to be falling away. So in the context of a comparison where you are constantly using candles as benchmarks for one another to try and get a feel for um, is this not so much anomalous but am i seeing a a a deterioration a, a diminution in terms of selling or buying and that's certainly the case here because we've got similar sort of price action but the volume here is much less than it was higher up in this particular price waterfall so it gives you a, a heads up, if nothing else, not necessarily that the market is going to just you know, reverse and we're going to have a nice V-shaped rally all the way back up to the volume point of control again. But at the very least, that if you're in that position, then it's potentially a point at which you might consider getting out or at least closing part of position. If you've got, if you're running multiple contracts and you're scaling out, then you know, take most of them off the table at this point and maybe leave one or two to run however you you uh, you work if you've only got one contract then you know at that point maybe it's time to to take it off the table and just see what pans out and of course i'm only looking at this in terms of one chart the trend monitor down here it's a fantastic indicator it just keeps you in through this stuff and you know, when the market goes into the congestion pages these if you get in early up here then you get this you start to worry and fret and think oh do i close out should i take the position you know do i park close what do i do the trend monitor is designed to help you to stay in. That's the one objective for this indicator. It's trying to give you the confidence to stay in through these horrible phases of price action when uncertainty starts to creep into your mind and you start to make um, uh, knee-jerk reaction decisions when you have to be patient. That is one of the abuses of VPA as well. VPA uh, keeps you your mind logical. You make logical, common sense decisions based on logic, not on emotion. So that's where we are at the moment in terms of uh, this, the, uh, the the cable. And that I just wanted to show you that because it's a it's a classic example of breakaway, managing the trade, VPA, the indicators, and everything else. You can see. I mean, we go up onto 15 second. You know, a scalping trader, plenty of opportunities up here. What have we got? Volatility trigger. What do we expect? Congestion reversal. It's exactly what we're getting. But that's on 15 seconds. You know, that may be enough for some people. Um, I suggest that, you know, on cable, it probably wouldn't be. It might be on euro dollar, handful of pips maybe. Um, but the principles are exactly the same. If this is going to reverse into a, a, move, liar, a move higher, if, if the pound is going to lift off the bottom here and uh, the dollar is going to start selling off more strongly, then what you will see ultimately is the trend monitor starts to transition through. It's already started on to, to gain traction on one. Over on three, it's it's in a, a phase where it's uncertainty at the moment, so it hasn't transitioned fully through to blue to really confirm what is going on down here. No change on five at the moment, and certainly no change on 10. You wouldn't expect it's too far out anyway. And finally, just down onto the daily, 
you know, where is this move going to? Well, you know, we've got the VPOC here, which is hugely important and a massive amount of resistance over here at 39.50. So any move from here, you know, it, on the daily chart is going to hit resistance at uh, 3,900 uh, for sure, whatever time frame you're trading. So you've just got to be aware of that because remember, the slower the time frame, the greater the significance, whether that's resistance, whether it's a volume point of control, whatever it is, the slower time frame will carry far more weight. I'm just going to pass back to Anna. Okay, welcome back. Um, right, I've actually still got the pound. I said we're looking at Euro Aussie, and now I'm back on the pound Aussie for um, a couple of two or three little lessons actually. Uh, David was saying um, that there is more risk in um, joining a trend that is underway. It's it's not impossible, but there are certain factors that you have to consider. And the pound Aussie was just a really nice example of uh, of, of such uh, uh, of such a, a situation. And if we go to the five minute chart for the pound Aussie, and again, funnily enough, again these three, the third level again, the, the R3 and the S3, um, there are six levels that are calculated for you on the Camarilla uh, indicator. Uh, most um, um, when people use camera they just stick to four we've actually added uh, an extra two uh, for a number we just wanted more levels so you can if I scrunch them up here now these are the daily ones and obviously the price action this morning was quite um, I wouldn't say extreme but it was it was um, it was very strong so all these levels have now been taken out uh, and they will be recalculated at the uh, rollover uh, tonight. So what we then do is we then bring the hourly ones into play as as we have here. And it's really nice. This is played out in just the way that I was hoping it was going to play out because I said I've got the hourly, I've got the five minute and I've also got the Renko. But just to go back, this is the move uh, from this morning, this is the um, this is the um, this looks like the 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 RBA situation. As I said, it was down, up, and then it was up, and then we had the the fall away. We had this really really nice waterfall. The notice the the volume is much reduced as you compared to what you see now. But you have to bear in mind that at um, at the Europe, you know, the tail end of Asia and 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 the beginning of uh, of, of Eurex, there is less participation. But when these volume parts were being uh, created, uh, they wouldn't have been so squashed down. They would have been, you know, you would have seen them in real time and they would have been, you know, above average or average for that period. But as soon as you get London coming on board, um, where, you know, you have this massive injection of liquidity and participation and activity, this kind of, you know, they do do reduce that doesn't mean you don't interpret them in the same way you will still see rise you know falling prices rising volume you will see all the anomalies that you would expect to see with the candles but to go back to the initial move so we've seen this move lower beautifully off the this third level as i said i've looked at the hourly but it works just as well on the faster time frame so down it came and this is uh, 9.15, this is quarter past seven. Then it goes into a period. This is this congestion phase. Now, you've missed that. You, you're, not at your, you're not at your terminal. Fine, it's not the time that you normally trade. And you see that there has been a very strong move lower. Then you see, notice that there has been, that the, you know, it looks like there's a congestion uh, coming. Maybe you think there's going to be a reversal uh, 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 about to happen. And this is where, You've got the indicators, but you've got just your VPA. So you look at these four, the set of four candles that you have here, and you look at the volume profile underneath the candles. And this is what you're looking for all the time. You're looking for the anomalies. And by anomalies, we mean that the, it's effort and result. There has been, you know, the, the, the this is the result. This is the move in this candle. But look at the effort that has gone into it that is not... You know, it doesn't match. It should, if that was going to go higher, it was, you know, it would be pushing higher. It hasn't. 
then you also have to factor in that it is actually at the volume point of control and this this develops this is dynamic this is develop, this is when the market is in what we call equilibrium um, trends start when the market is no longer in equilibrium and it's also coming up to the London the London Open sometimes you know that 40 minutes before the London Open you do get a bit of congestion market you know market participants know London is going to come on board so they wait to see what you know what direction the the London traders are going to take the market but just looking at those four so you've had this waterfall you know volume kind of um, uh, as I said, underneath it. But even there, you've got, you know, you've got, you've got the falling volume. But it's very, it, it, it's not what you want to see. Is you want to see all the can, the the um, uh, the uh, uh, the histogram going up and up and up. It doesn't. You know, you kind of got a, a, a kind of anomaly there as well. Uh, and it's also you look at your support and resistance. Is it actually hitting an important? This is a price based support so you always have to bring in these other factors as well and you get this effort to rise and you can say oh, okay well the effort to rise hasn't uh, hasn't happened but it's gone into this congestion phase because London is coming on board there's all sorts of different factors that you have to uh, you know consider when this is this is happening so London comes in where are we 1040 that's eight that's 840 so that's all out of the way this is an interesting candle there's an effort to rise you've got a big spike to the top went straight into a, a, a resistance line bang down it came and then we do get a break you can see the rise in the volume so you could say well I've seen all this I've also got the uh, the Renko you know, is this an opportunity I could possibly take? There are traders who would just look to take a tiny, tiny amount on the uh, out of that trend, and you might think, well, what's the point? But it, the point is, it depends the size of your position size. Uh, you know, if, if you're t if you're micro lots, no, you would say, okay, I've missed all that. We've had the congestion. I, you know, I'm going to wait until it bases, until I've got a, a some sort of a solid foundation where possibly we can see a reversal and what you need to see for the reversal you need to see a stop at a, a, a support line which we have here we've got volume support this is derived from the VPOC and you've got price support as well but what's interesting I said about the hourly chart what you also do to see whether there's any validity there's there's a there's a, you know having said that you know that one it didn't carry on lower sometimes it does and to, to give you an idea of well if it is going to carry on lower where's it going to go to and this is where you look at the levels that you can see on your slower time frames and when I looked at that uh, price action that was developing I looked at it on the five minute chart and I thought well okay if that is going to carry on you know if there is an opportunity to carry on lower where's it going to aim for and the obvious one most obvious is the S4. Now it didn't hasn't actually got here. It doesn't mean that you know it's just because it didn't get here this time it won't do the next time. And also there's a wick to the bottom of that candle. Can you see? So that kind of tells you you say do you know what the risk on this forget it. Let's see. Let's wait for the reversal. And we can see you know the the, the Aussie is still very over uh, extended. Now what I've also so you know the chances are it is going to uh, turn roll over basically and as it has done on let's have a look on the five minute down here and we've actually got a cross of these two lines and a cross on the CSI tells you that there is a move underway and it is a you know you can consider it and possibly look for a um, uh, an entry you know say yeah you've missed a little bit of the, of the trend but a cross on the CSI you know does actually you know is also valid as well the next question is is well where's it going to well the volume point of control is the most obvious first port of call as it were if we look at the um, that same piece of price action that we saw on the, on the Renko what the Renko does it takes away all the uh, all the uh, the noise as it, as it were from the candles and again we have this you know this is the, the the clean break that we saw from the S3 then we have 
where that congestion, where we had that effort to rise. Now, the, the volume, the VPA would tell you that that wasn't going very far, but we did get a change of, um, uh, of color from the trend dot and uh, uh, the, uh, the trend monitor. So, you know, would you have taken it? It depends. Possibly not, because as I said, this all occurs around the, uh, the you know, just, after, just before and just after the London Open. And, and really the rule of thumb with London is if you are on, a, on the shorter, on the faster time frames, just wait, wait until, and sometimes you have to wait maybe 40 minutes, you know, wait till after nine o'clock. So, you know, because of the, the price action, you have to put it in the context of the session that's being traded and be aware of, as I said, all these other factors that can come into play. This is the additional, this is that extra bit that you think, well, could you have taken uh, that out? It, the, that's the primary trend lower. This is the secondary trend. And the primary trend has, ha, has uh, was resumed. You know, there was a final push. You'll often find with moves is there's always, you know, there's always one last push higher or one last push lower before you get the reversal. So that would have been too early an entry on the reversal. It then push lower. Then we have this. It goes back into this, into sideways basing. It has to find some support somewhere. The, you know, we've run out of, as I said, levels based on the uh, on the daily levels as we see here. But we've got price based levels, and we've got this really nice support platform provided uh, by the volume point of control. Now, is that enough to? you know, to move that on further. Well, again, you just, we just have to wait and see. So it's a huge down candle that we had today. And what we're trading is we're trading this tight, you know, this wick that's at the bottom of this candle. And we go to the hourly and we think, well, this is actually in a, in a, a sort of trend lower as it were. Uh, but if it's going to go higher, where is this going to go? Well, potentially it could go back and retest the S3. So possibly there's enough in there. Now, just a quick word about cross pairs. Um, it, it's been a it's been a feature recently that you know some of the best moves have been in cross pairs. And the problem with trading cross pairs on the faster time frames is the spread. And um, one of our um, uh, one of our traders, one option you might consider, it may mean moving brokers, but see if brokers offer either raw spreads or zero spreads. And what happens is you you pay you basically pay a commission, a small commission. But what that means is is you you know it may be a way of trading some of these pairs, which may not necessarily be uh, very you know, as heavily traded as the, uh, the, the the majors, the majors being euro dollar, obviously uh, dollar yen cable, etc. But they may offer the opportunity. I mean, look, you know, we've had Aussie CAD, we've had Aussie Swiss, we've had Euro Aussie, Pound Aussie. Okay, that's one of the uh, Euro yen and, and Pound yen. Um, just consider it. As I said, it's it, because there is a cost to trading. You know, you you may think, well, I don't pay anything. Well, you do in the spread. You know, there's no such thing as a as a free lunch in uh, this business. And finally, the other thing you may want to consider if you've got the, the CSI is if you are um, like I do, you you tend to restrict yourselves to maybe three or four pairs rather than have um, all the um, you know the whole of the CSI under here. I've got the pound Aussie. Mine are all based around the pound, so I could put the yen on here, or I, and I will put the uh, the dollar on here because that will tell me um, you know if, okay when these lines move together in parallel like they do here, that is telling you there is a congestion. But if I have one of the, uh, you know, the other currencies there, I maybe have got a divergence on another pair. And it's just a quick, you know, uh, a quick eyeball to go and see, oh, OK, well, maybe this, the move is, uh, is, is happening elsewhere. So those are the three. You've got the hour, you've got the Renko, and you have got the five minutes as well. Let me just put the, I haven't put the VPOC on here. Maybe I should. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Have a look. Have a look and see what happens. Where are we? Uh, no, that's way, way back up here. You can see this massive congestion for uh, the pound Aussie that was um, yesterday. And that's, as we said, this is not, let's have a look. Oops, let's take the euro off. Let's put the, dot, the Aussie on here. Hold on a minute. 
there we are. Yeah, they're kind of moving in the same, they're moving in parallel. And that also tells you there isn't really a trade to be taken. Now, what's interesting, I said it was, I was aiming for the S4. Had I had the VPOC on here, and I think I better keep it on here now, that tells me that's where it stopped. The volume support actually came in. So it's levels and flow. The levels will tell you, you know, where you're going to get a, a potential reversal. Also, where the price is probably aiming, you can then decide, is it worth taking, you know, is the risk worth taking? Because I think this is going to get there. That's only that's a decision only you can make. Okay. Right, we're going to stop there. Anything else you want to say, David? Or sorry? We're actually going to stop, literally. We're not going to turn off. We're just going to stop just for five minutes while we have a, a drink. And we're going to carry on looking at, let's have a look at the indices, which are all, I mean, I, flat would be, is an understatement. I mean, there is no volatility at the moment. We haven't talked about volatility and we need to, we need to, we need to talk about volatility. Um, we look at the VIX at 15 there's an awful lot of complacency i i don't think anyone can remember the amount of complacency that is in the market at the moment now what what are you saying well why am i looking at the vix and why is it having an effect on i'm trading forex because if the market generally is drained of, of volatility in other words it's just flat it's really not going very much very well it affects everything and you have you're in a you're in a, um, a scenario that is actually more more risky from all sorts of points of view. One of them is you get bored, and um, you know there's a lot of congestion. Congestion can be more risk because any breakaway is not really going to go very far because you have no volatility. Now, extreme volatility is just as bad, but at least you've got to move. And what this is telling us is there is no volatility at the moment or very, very little. This morning was uh, was a godsend because, as I said, the RBA, you will get these events which will, you know, help to, to push the price one way or another. But it's something to be aware of and something we're going to talk about uh, in the next sort of topic. So I'm going to stop now for a second. This is the NASDAQ is that is the daily chart for the NASDAQ. I don't know how a NASDAQ trader is supposed to trade that. This is you know, it's a razor blade there up to 13. And where have we? we've got the small caps? Uh, the small caps are broadly sideways with a sort of bit of a bearish bias. So anyway, I'm going to stop now. But as I said, you can be more than welcome to stay. I know we've got other people joining us and we'll be back in about five minutes. Where will you find all the bits and pieces? You'll find them uh, here at, this is where you'll find all the indicators at quantumtrading.com. Uh, we have all the platforms, MT45, NinjaTrader78, TradingView, which I've just been through with you, and also uh, TradeStation has now been launched. We've got two versions of that. That's uh, the TradeStation 9.5 with interactive brokers as the live feed, and TradeStation 10, which is TradeStation Securities. And they, of course, incorporate the, the awesome power of radar screen, which is wonderful. And remember, when you invest with us, there's several things to remember. First of all, you can move your indicators from platform to platform. So if you start with one platform, you perhaps want to move to another platform, that's perfectly fine. We don't charge you for that. We just transfer your indicators across. We have a lot of uh, customers who just start perhaps with MT4 or TradingView, then they want to move to uh, TradeStation or NinjaTrader perfectly fine we do that for you absolutely no charge at all and finally if you do whether you buy one indicator or several if you upgrade to another package for example we will always give you a credit for those indicators so you never lose out you never lose your initial investment we always protect you in that respect so you'll always receive a full credit and finally, of course, if you invest in the full package, even more so with TradeStation at the moment, because it's currently at $677, I think, off the top of my head. But once those other indicators are developed for the platform, then we will be increasing the price, which will align with the MT45 platform. So it's a great time to invest with TradingView, because as I say, you'll get all those indicators free of charge. And you won't be paying for them. So it's not a bad time to invest in that package. Um, but all the other packages, if you invest with the full package, we also give you all future indicators we develop free of charge. It's just our way of saying thank you. Finally, just to give you a heads up on the education program, 
Um, I've just touched on one or two aspects of it. Obviously, within the program here, it's called the Complete Forex Trading Program because that's exactly what it is. Uh, to say it's comprehensive um, is a disservice. It is everything you need to know. Uh, you have all the modules which cover the psychology, the fundamental analysis, relational analysis, so you'll understand how markets relate to one another in terms of risk, in terms of uh, relationships to, to bonds, bond yields, how commodities fit into that structure, and of course, the, and the actual relationships within markets, you know, how currency pairs relate within the markets themselves. You've got a, a, a deep dive into technical analysis, of course, that is that is VPA. It's all the Wyckoffian principles. It's Wyckoff's third law, th three laws. And in addition to that, it's how to apply VPA, not just to, to straightforward analysis, but we teach you how to understand when a trend is coming to a pause point and to identify whether it's actually a reversal in trend, in other words, from primary to primary, or is it simply a pullback? And if there's one thing that you would learn, it is simply that, because that will stop you getting out of trades too early. It's as simple as that. The mechanics of trading, and then there's something like three, two to 300 hours of video, VPA chart examples, how to use the indicators, pulling it all together, topic webinars with Anna and myself, a huge webinar library, and a resources section as well. And of course, all of that is backed up now we've added the QTE funded Forex program and the reason we've done it's very simple because we wanted to give you our students and this is only available to students on the program I'm sorry it's not available to anyone else if you're a student on the program you have the option to join it's there to give you the opportunity to leverage your knowledge and it's very simple in the way it works. It's, it's a no risk deal as far as you're concerned because you are trading our money. It's as simple as that. We give you the opportunity to start with an evaluation account at $5,000, $10,000, $15,000. dollars once you have achieved a, a very achievable target at that level, you've proved to yourself that you have the consistency to trade. You've proved to us you have the consistency to trade. We then multiply it by four. So if you start with a $15,000 account, we push you up to 60,000 and thereafter we double it. So you go from 60 to 120 to 240 and in pretty much no time at all, you would be up trading one and two million dollar accounts. It is simple as that. There is no risk to you. There's a one-off fee to pay, that's it. That's your only expense of getting into that particular program, but it's entirely optional. What we've now bolted together, we feel it gives the complete package, if you like, of giving you the opportunity as a student to benefit from your knowledge and prove to yourself that you can trade a large money account at no risk. So that's it. Hope you've enjoyed this particular video. Lots more to come as always. Thanks for watching. See you again soon and bye for now. Where will you find all the bits and pieces? And you'll find them uh, here at, this is where you'll find all the indicators at quantumtrading.com. Uh, we have all the platforms, MT45, NinjaTrader78, TradingView, which I've just been through with you, and also uh, TradeStation has now been launched. We've got two versions of that. That's uh, the TradeStation 9.5 with interactive brokers as the live feed, and TradeStation 10, which is TradeStation Securities. And they, of course, incorporate the, the awesome power of radar screen, which is wonderful. And remember, when you invest with us, there's several things to remember. First of all, you can move your indicators from platform to platform. So if you start with one platform, and you perhaps want to move to another platform. That's perfectly fine. We don't charge you for that. We just transfer your indicators across. We have a lot of uh, customers who just start perhaps with MT4 or TradingView. Then they want to move to uh, TradeStation or NinjaTrader. Perfectly fine. We do that for you. Absolutely no charge at all. And finally, if you do, whether you buy one indicator or several, if you upgrade to another package, for example, we will always give you a credit for those indicators. So you never lose out. You never lose your initial investment. We always protect you in that respect. So you'll always receive a full credit. And finally, of course, if you invest in the full package, even more so with TradeStation at the moment, because it's currently at $677, I think, off the top of my head. But once those other indicators are developed for the platform, then we will be increasing the price, which will align with the MT45 platform. 
So it's a great time to invest with TradingView because, as I say, you'll get all those indicators free of charge. And you won't be paying for them. So it's not a bad time to invest in that package. Um, but all the other packages, if you invest with the full package, we also give you all future indicators we develop free of charge. It's just our way of saying thank you. Finally, just to give you a heads up on the education program, um, I've just touched on one or two aspects of it. Obviously, within the program here, it's called the Complete Forex Trading Program because that's exactly what it is. Uh, to say it's comprehensive um, is a disservice. It is everything you need to know. Uh, you have all the modules which cover the psychology, the fundamental analysis, relational analysis, so you'll understand how markets relate to one another in terms of risk, in terms of uh, relationships to, to bonds, bond yields, how commodities fit into that structure, and of course, the, and the actual relationships within markets, you know, how currency pairs relate within the markets themselves. You've got a, a, a deep dive into technical analysis, of course, that is that is VPA. It's all the Wyckoffian principles. It's Wyckoff's third law, th three laws. And in addition to that, it's how to apply VPA, not just to, to straightforward analysis, but we teach you how to understand when a trend is coming to a pause point and to identify whether it's actually a reversal in trend, in other words, from primary to primary, or is it simply a pullback? And if there's one thing that you would learn, it is simply that, because that will stop you getting out of trades too early. It's as simple as that. The mechanics of trading, and then there's something like three, two to 300 hours of video, VPA chart examples, how to use the indicators, pulling it all together, topic webinars with Anna and myself, a huge webinar library, and a resources section as well. And of course, all of that is backed up now we've added the QTE funded Forex program and the reason we've done it's very simple because we wanted to give you our students and this is only available to students on the program I'm sorry it's not available to anyone else if you're a student on the program you have the option to join it's there to give you the opportunity to leverage your knowledge and it's very simple in the way it works. It's, it's a no risk deal as far as you're concerned because you are trading our money. It's as simple as that. We give you the opportunity to start with an evaluation account at $5,000, $10,000, $15,000. dollars once you have achieved a, a very achievable target at that level, you've proved to yourself that you have the consistency to trade. You've proved to us you have the consistency to trade. We then multiply it by four. So if you start with a $15,000 account, we push you up to 60,000 and thereafter we double it. So you go from 60 to 120 to 240 and in pretty much no time at all, you would be up trading one and two million dollar accounts. It is simple as that. There is no risk to you. There's a one-off fee to pay, that's it. That's your only expense of getting into that particular program, but it's entirely optional. What we've now bolted together, we feel it gives the complete package, if you like, of giving you the opportunity as a student to benefit from your knowledge and prove to yourself that you can trade a large money account at no risk. So that's it. Hope you've enjoyed this particular video. Lots more to come as always. Thanks for watching. See you again soon and bye for now.